Welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the difference quotient. So just a reminder about things related to constant rate of change. When we think about constant rate of change, that's really the same thing as slope, and that's really the same thing as this formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, when we have a couple of points that we're trying to find the slope of. So relative to that, we have a topic in calculus called the difference quotient. And it's all related, but in the difference quotient, we prefer to write the slope in terms of function notation, like f of x. So I'm gonna rewrite this sort of slope formula, if you will, as the dq to stand for the difference quotient, and notate it using function notation of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. In a later video, we will actually talk about and explore the meaning of what this H is here, but for right now, we're just gonna get our way through the algebra part of this difference quotient. So I will start with finding the difference quotient of a linear function, f of x equals negative five x plus two. I always like to start writing my problems with the formula in mind. So I'm gonna rewrite the actual difference quotient formula here and I will continue on with my function. So here we go, we've got the difference quotient is equal to, now the trick to know here is you've gotta be very swift with your function notation understanding. Here, when we have f of x plus h, that is telling us to go to the function called f and insert in, substitute in this quantity x plus h in all the x's that you see. So luckily here in this linear function, we only have one place where that should be substituted in, in the x plus h uh, into this x right here. And then I'm supposed to subtract off the whole function again, the f of x part. So I'm gonna start with this first section and I'm gonna put this in brackets to indicate that I'm just starting with the f of x plus h. So I take my x plus h as a quantity and I will substitute it into my function. So I now have negative five times x plus h, add two according to the function, and I'm gonna close that bracket because all the stuff here in this bracket just pertains to this first section of the formula, f of x plus h. Now according to the formula, I'm supposed to subtract off f of x, which was given to me here in the beginning. So I will subtract off this whole function, but be careful. Because you are subtracting off more than just one term, you need to make sure that you write that in parentheses. So open parentheses and then now insert your f of x function inside here. And then we have all of this being divided by h. Okay, at this point, it's now just algebra of collecting like terms and simplifying as much as you can. So we have the difference quotient is equal to, I wanna distribute my negative five on both x and h. So I have negative five x, subtract five h, add two. Then I will subtract this whole quantity and I will do so carefully by uh, distributing my negative throughout both of those terms. So when I do that, I end up with plus five x, but then subtract my two. Of course, all divided by the h still. Next step, I will have the difference quotient is equal to, now if you look carefully, I have negative five x here, and I look down the line and notice I have another positive five x. In those particular cases, I have two terms that can subtract right out. So negative five x, subtracts out with a 5x. Negative 5h, I don't have any more h's that I can combine with it, so you just write it down, negative 5h. We dealt with it, so I will cross it out. And then I have a positive two, subtract two, those two terms subtract out themselves. So literally in the numerator, I'm only left with negative 5h. But then of course, divide by h. And what we notice here is I have a quantity in the numerator, that is shared with the quantity in the denominator, the h's. So I can divide out those two h's. h divided by h reduces down to one. What's left now is a negative five. So for this problem, we can say that the difference quotient is just equal to the quantity negative five. Now here's what's really interesting about this particular one. We notice if we go back to our original function, we know that that was a linear function to begin with. And if you look closely, you will recognize that in fact, the slope of that linear function was a negative five and it was no coincidence that we actually ended up with an answer 
for the difference quotient being negative five. If I take you back here, I started with saying that we were gonna be connecting this new idea of difference quotient with the concept of constant rate of change and slope. Well, this negative five for the difference quotient is in fact the slope of that function that we started with. Thank you.